with love and gratitude. Thank you. You have a very a rainbow aura, like a you live. Your soul came from a a place full of rainbow. I'm getting a sense that you have have lives in the as a parallel soul, which is on the parallel universe on a whole new other dimension.、Mm -hmm. But you also have had lives in here on on this universe, and Andromeda is probably your origin in this universe. In the other universe, there's this rainbow dimension. I'm really trying to get it, get what it is, but it it's a whole new dimension and.、Uh, I've never seen anything like this. It's a, it's a rainbow being. Okay. Sort of, sort of like a celestial, but, but definitely not not what I've seen. Okay, that's cool.、Um, I've actually gotten.、Um, you can get your aura photographed, and、yeah. uh, the first time I got my aura photographed, I actually had this really bright rainbow aura, <laughs> and I thought it was very cool. Oh, cool! Like, where do you get that? Um, there's a there's a woman that does it、um, just down the street from where I live, but it's this magnetic machine where you put your palms on these two magnetic readers, and it's a、um, it's like a slow timed photograph to capture the electrons in the air, and、oh. so it takes probably thirty seconds for her to grab a photograph, but as long as your hands are there, sometimes she'll give you like a minute or two to meditate, and then it just captures the energy around you. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really interesting. You, I believe you are one of the rainbow children. And usually, when I talked about the rainbow children, I always thought that it has to be the next generation, like the kids in this generation, meaning, <laughs> which is like after Gen Z. Yeah, so but, the ones that were born like recently. Yeah, but I believe you're one of them. Like, so I've never I mean, seen a millennial、um, rainbow children of. Okay. Yes. Um. Yeah. You mentioned about yeah. You're in the journey of healing. I believe you're more of in a journey of remembering than healing. So the reason I say this is because I don't see like a like a huge wound in you, or for this lifetime. I don't really see like yeah. I don't really see like a huge soul contract or karma thing that you both need to work on to actually heal that subconscious wound because. I don't see it as a big thing. I see that your you meeting her and you being called to the Lemurian journey is all about remembering your potential as a soul and your origin as a soul. That Lemurian is probably just an entry. You do have a life in Lemuria too, but and that's pretty recent. That's like nothing compared to your earliest life. You came like. As a foreign alien from another universe to this universe, I've I've always kind of felt like I don't fit in. Yeah, that could explain. But I feel like you don't you you may you may not fit in, but your energy is very easy to work with and blend with to the people around. Yeah, I've always been a bit of a chameleon in crowds. Yeah, that's because you are a shapeshifter too. Oh, okay, okay. But sometimes、yeah. I feel like when I'm a chameleon, I'm not truly myself. Like I don't get to say what I want to say, or I don't get to be who I want to be. Yeah, that's what a shape shifter. The thing is, you change into someone else to become a different person to match with their personalities and their behaviors. That's that's how like our guides speak to us and our angels speak to us. They tend to change, sometimes change their appearances to match what we feel and. To say what's the what's the best feeling for us,、mm -hmm. in a way that it doesn't hurt us, and it's accurate to us.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's also really good to allow our guides or angels to be allow them to be whatever form they whatever appearance they want to take. That way, they can be like appear to be more like a true person in front of us. I work with this、um, channeler, and we do group meditations. And sometimes、um, she'll answer questions in the group, and she let me know. And this completely hit home with me because I was asking a runabout question about like how I take actionable steps in daily life, but also live out my soul's purpose and be happy. And so she was really blunt with me, and she was like, "You need to release your ancestral trauma." And your residual programming around lack and poverty. 
Mm. And it just like, even the words she used resonated with me. I feel like that is not part of like, it's not from you. It's more like, I feel like you volunteered to sort of clear this karma. You volunteered in this family. So I don't think it's like it came from you originally. It's not from your soul, this karma. It's it's literally you deciding to incarnate and sort of volunteer to help this family because it's also serving a purpose to be in this family with uh, aligned with like why you need to be in this certain location and how it mm -hmm. sort of aligns to your purpose on earth because you're a grid worker too and you're a different type of grid worker a rainbow grid worker you're sort okay. of building this rainbow structure okay um you you said something earlier about um an andromedon origin can you tell me a little bit more about that and anything that i might need to know from that lifetime that might kind of help me move through this life a little bit more with ease or might support me a little bit more yeah i think that your second origin is andromeda like after the rainbow origin like you were meant to be in an andromeda as that was sort of the gateway to this universe from your universe so and this is sort of a capital city wow it's in the edge of the andromeda galaxy they have okay. this land and they have this portal where you can it's like a stargate where you can travel to another universe and you came all the way from there to here to the Andromeda galaxy and sort of start started navigating through life in Andromeda to get used to this the the laws and the frequency the vibration of this universe and this life in Andromeda particularly it's a pretty crowded city it's a it, it's a crowded place but it's nowhere near as uncomfortable as earth that's for sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I know that you probably don't prefer much crowded place, but I think that you blend in very well in every place, as I mentioned. So that's why you had no problem even in crowded places. Yeah. And the Andromedans, they are very good at technology. Like they're very advanced in technology. And especially the place you were in, they are advanced in spiritual technology which is more about the hypnosis, separating the soul and the body, separating all different levels of consciousness and dimensions. You, you were sort of part of the experimentation, or not experiment, like you, you're working as a, a person who tries to tap into different dimensions and different consciousness when you were in Andromeda. Okay, that sounds like what I'm trying to do lately too. So I use yeah. different hypnosis techniques different meditation techniques. I've also been kind of exploring lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. And the strangest thing is, so I would have to say I used to be a shift worker. I work for a police organization and I used to never dream. So there was probably like um, maybe six years in my life when I couldn't remember my dreams. I don't think I slept for more than four hours a night. And then in the past year, I've been flooded with dreams. Yeah. And sometimes I'll ask a question because I remember one time I asked my husband, I'm like, do you dream in color? Because I didn't know if I dreamt in color. And the following week, I had a dream mm -hmm. where I stopped in the middle of the dream and I was like, oh, I dream in color. Yeah, that's because you've done a lot of experimentation with the spiritual technology in Andromeda with, that's revolving around dreams. I'm very intrigued with the dream technology in Andromeda. You were, yeah, you were, yeah, experimenting astral projections, ast astral traveling by, by coming here on Earth. Do you sort of make it easier for this planet, for the people in this planet to have like more enriching experience of dreams? You bring up the energy of, um, the rainbow energy which is connected very connected to the inner child and also very linked with dreams themselves and by helping the human helping humanity to sort of have a richer dream easier to access their dream because of of the vibration and energy you're spreading this can help them get to know more about themselves step into their own spirituality so i think that your subconscious your higher self is sort of helping humanity to bring to lift up the consciousness so you and vimi you, you two have a very vibe 
vibrant dream. And I feel like you're teaching people, you're, you're subconsciously like teaching um, Earth to sort of work more into their dreams. You too specialize like in the in the dreamer, like uh, the dreamer occupation. And Jordan, they are, I was surprised, they are, they are dreamers. They, their career is literally the, the, the place you were in, originated from. It's, they focus on dreams. Very cool. Very cool. Am, am I meant to remember a lot of my dreams? Because mm -hmm. sometimes yes. I feel like, but I only get bits and pieces of it. And maybe I don't. Yeah, totally you will get. Know. You probably get more okay. as time goes on, because you've just recently awakened. Huh. B tells me that she she is able to remember a lot of her dreams, and to the point that she can even feel them. Uh, yeah, feel them, but also travel to another consciousness of her life. Because I think you have the ability to sort of live other people's lives through dreams. Mm. <laughs> this sounds weird. I, I actually literally remember a show and there's a show, an episode that this person has the ability to sleep and entering a dream state and then go into that other person's um, body and live through that, their life, like live through their consciousness. Oh my okay. God, this is so crazy. What the heck? <laughs> so this is weird because um, I guess the only other person I kind of talk to besides Vimy about my dreams is my husband. Yeah. And sometimes we compare dreams and he always dreams about like people in his life. So he knows their names, he knows them from their childhood, but like my dreams, for some reason, there's there's not usually people I can recall from my daily life. It's or more like, like you don't remember, you forgot. Mm. So my husband has PTSD and he kind of heals a lot of his inner childhood traumas through dreams. So through the dreamscape, it's a very powerful way of wow. walking your energetic body through old trauma without dealing with it in your actual physical body and having the physical sensation of stress or anxiety yeah. or panic. You're helping your husband lucid dream. Like that's already showing that that's your career. <laughs> that's what you're, you're here to do. So uh, all I can do is tell you what I kind of learn and what I kind of practice, which is also what I tell my husband to do and practice. So before I go to bed, I usually release all of the negative energy from my day. And mm -hmm. I surround myself with this beam of loving, unconditional white light to protect me. And then I call back my energy, my power and my magic from all directions of time and space, from all realms, realities and timelines. And then I set an intention for the night. And sometimes it, like for me, I've been doing this for probably maybe six months that I clear my energy before I go to bed. And I kind of set an intention, which to me is just like a prayer before I go to sleep. To sometimes it's to cut cords. Um, something that I can give you an example of is um, recently with the spiritual awakening, I find that I'm a little less aligned with some friends. So I've been grieving that process, like they, they played a really important role in part of my life, but I understand that we don't align now, so maybe that time has passed. So like for the last maybe month or so, I've been setting the intention of releasing and cutting that energetic cord and sending it back to them with love and light. I've been trying to um, connect with the Akashic Records, and I think I did once. I think you should try to sort of get into that dream state. I think the next technique is getting into that dream state while you access to the Akashic Records to kind of connect your methods into mm -hmm. the with the Akashic Records. Maybe that could help you more because okay. you specialize in dreams and true dreams. Another question I have for you is, do I have spiritual gifts besides the dream? and have I activated those? Is there something that I can do to continually develop them so that they can help me in this life? Yes, I think you have clairvoyance, you have good visualizations, which, which is what I do, by the way. You can see a few things in a more vivid imagery. Yeah, um, you got a lot of psychic gifts. I don't, I don't see like a major issue, just the blockage they need to get rid of. 
at the moment, um, I think that I'm kind of, I feel kind of lost, to be quite honest. Understandable, because you've, you've, you have, you are a big dreamer. You access to many different dreams unconsciously and unaware. Probably whenever you travel, it's like you're living through different lives mm -hmm. while you're dreaming, and then you gather like information and downloads from different places you go, and then you sometimes... feel overwhelmed and lost. So sometimes I wake up in the morning and I don't remember the dream, but I just remember the message. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So that's weird. You but get I... you you get better. Now you know things are gonna start aligning. I feel. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little bit more active than I perhaps would have been in the past. So, in the past, I just I thought that I was meditating wrong. To be honest with you. No. So I, that was deterring me from meditation, but um, I find a great deal of benefit from group meditation. Like, I feel like the energy that I get from a group meditation, from other people's energy, is just very powerful. It almost activating. I think that you've done group meditation in Andromeda too. It's very interesting. You you have a mission in Andromeda as a group. To access the dream state of other pe people's consciousness, to sort of help other people, yeah, that's that's also part of your mission in the drama. Then even now, you're sort of like living in other people's dream to subconsciously implant new light codes and new downloads and encourage other people that are struggling. Group meditation is like that. You're all connected deeply. You're working together as a collective. And that's why it's more powerful for you, and it feels that you're not alone. I, I definitely feel that it's related. It's part of it. Like it's part of your mission. You're able to work through the subconscious mind. Damn, and draw them. Wow, I, that's a step up from Octarians. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so Octarians are more like telepathy. They're very powerful telepathic beings. But it's not really the subconscious. It's like mind mind communication. But Andromeda communicates through dreams and subconscious. Like uh, Andromeda is vast, like because we are talking literally an entire galaxy. And I've met uh, quite a few Andromeda clients. Each and every individual has a different story to tell. So, oh wow! Okay. Yeah, very cool. I do sometimes feel like, or maybe just more recently, I feel like. If I can extend kindness to someone else, that perhaps like even if they have like an armor or a shield up, that yes, my kindness can. subconsciously they can feel it, so that they can be more aware and so that they can heal whatever they need to heal. And I always just thought it was in my head. Yes,、yeah, so the subconscious is so powerful that they could bypass walls. So that's why you are able to affect other people, even when they are building walls and shields around them. And、okay. actually, that makes a lot of sense now because I've deal with clients with psychic attacks, and the psychic attacks that they deal with is subconscious, and that they tell me that no matter how much shield they put around, they still can't block it. And I feel like that your ability of subconscious can actually the only way to counter the, their psychic attacks is I think it's through subconscious level, and I think your technology will actually help, like these people. That struggling with psychic attacks. Okay. Yeah, this is a good, a great info, by the way. Hmm.、Um, should I be worried about psychic attacks? No, not、okay. at all. I don't think you should, because you're powerful. Like you, it's literally your field, the subconscious mind. Like your subconscious is more, more guarded. So I don't think so, you guys need to worry about attacks at all. I think I'm. So I think that I'm very guarded because.、Um, Working for a police organization is very interesting. Like when you, well, when I do, anyways, when I walk into a building, like the energy is very heavy. It's very dense.、Um, police officers carry a lot of, like, a lot of sadness, a lot of grief, a lot of. Yeah. So I think that maybe my wall is always up because I'm. It's really hard for me not to absorb that energy. So、yeah. I do it every day, anyways. I put like a protective. White light energy around me, because maybe I'm not afraid of psychic attacks. I'm afraid of、um, yeah. I'm afraid of being impacted by other people's energy. 
Yeah, that's because you're an empath too, so it makes a lot of sense. You will leave. I don't see that you stay there any longer. Okay. And as as for the empath thing, I feel like it's not really you absorbing the energy. I feel like you're just affected in a way that that's what empaths are. It's not like you're taking their energies as your own. It's like you feel great sympathy for them, and that's why you're affected. And that's okay. uh, unfortunately, it's not something to to be able to handle. Like the only way to handle is to practice stoicism, <laughs> the masculine. Because I I, mm -hmm. I I'm a I'm a heavy super empath, so. I understand where you're coming from, and I okay. often believe that I was taking on other people's energy, but but I also shield myself, and you know I still get affected and triggered by other people's energy. And you mentioning about going through the、uh, sadness and emotions, right? I think it's because you picked up other people's、uh, emotions, or not picked up, but feel other people's emotion when you were traveling through other people's life in the in other people's dreams. Okay. And and that could explain that sudden flush, sudden flow of sadness and、um, joy, whenever you, after you wake up or after you, yeah, after literally after you wake up, usually,、okay. or it can be it can happen during any time of the day, sometimes because you are constantly traveling, astral traveling. Everyone is actually astral traveling, but you are also doing that、mm -hmm. in in the dream state. So sometimes I feel like you're you're dreaming, even though your physical body is aware. Like you can be in two places at once. I'd really like to work with you for the Akashic Record. Can you tell me a little bit more about like how you walk someone through it and how they access it with you? Well, first of all, I tell them the blockage, which there is like five keys to remove that blockage. It's actually you know not. It's actually very simple. Actually, any spiritual work is simple. It's like. It's just we living in this human society. We put we put boundaries. We put belief. We put blocks into ourselves, believing all of this is fiction, and it's very difficult and requires a lot of hard work and dedication. But the hard work is actually letting go and getting rid of all these beliefs. That's yeah, the that's hard. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll help you do that,、okay. and then we'll go through a guided meditation. Oh, I don't think you probably need guided meditation. I think you just need the music to sort of set the environment. Okay. And then we will meditate together. Before we meditate together, we'll probably write down some questions that you would like to know or ask about your soul, yourself, or anything you want to know about what you need. Your guidance is any questions fine. And then we will sort of channel that. I can feel the energy, like with your prayer and just sitting here with you and. Sometimes I feel other people's energies, but sometimes I don't at all. And I thought that I would never through Zoom, but it's it's very strong. And certain things that you say will.、Um, so there was one part where you were talking. I don't remember where it was, but there was like a throbbing in my head. So that really resonated with me. And then when there's a buzzing, there's a lot of stuff coming in for me. So I think you're helping me access that, and I think that. Your powers and your abilities, whatever they are, are much stronger than you give yourself credit for. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, 